Okay, last video from chapter 11. We're going to put it all together and try to decide what parameter uh, the problem is referring to. So we've got a couple of options here. Um, is it a mean? We've got three options, mean, proportion, and standard deviation. So if it's a mean, though, the question is, are, are the samples independent or dependent? So if they're independent, you're comparing two averages, then you would use that t-statistic uh, difference in the means. If they're dependent, they're paired, you're going to do the mean difference. Uh, proportion, uh, here, I should note here, there is a test regarding dependent proportions. Um, just because of time constraints, we're not going to have time to do that one. There's another test. Um, it's pretty simple to learn if you ever needed that. So maybe we should note that all the examples we did were when we were comparing two proportions and they were the samples were independent. Uh, and then we have our standard deviation and we use that F statistic. So let's rip through some examples here. So I actually have some friends, Jay and Sheila. Uh, they are pig farmers in southwestern Minnesota and they're changing the feed they use and they wonder that one of the, one of the options has weights where the weights vary too widely. So they have the same average, um, but the standard deviations are different, and they want to be more consistent. So what they do is they take two samples of 100 piglets, and they give the first sample one type of food, the second sample gets the other type of food, and then they weigh them after six months. So the question here is, does um, that swine food yield six-month-old pigs who weary, whose weight varies more than the other one? So we're looking whether whether the weight varies too widely, right? We're wondering if, if one weight varies more than. So this is an F test about variances. We're looking whether the variances are, if the variance of one is more than the variance of the other. All right, next one. We have Janice is commuting. Uh, she's got two possible routes. She collects travel times for 30 different trips on each route. And first route has an average time, blah, blah, blah. Second route, blah, blah, blah. Does Janice have enough evidence to say that the second route is the optimal one? Well, if we think about that, we're looking optimal one. We're thinking shortest, right? Average travel time, the optimal one would have the smaller average travel time. And the sample sizes are equal here, but they're not paired, right? It wasn't, I don't know what the difference is. It could be different routes driving with two different cars, two different cars on 30 different routes or something. I don't know. This is just two different routes, a random sample of 30 different trips. And so this is definitely a difference of the means. They're independent. So we're looking at the difference in the means. And we're assuming the difference is zero. And we're testing, actually, we're probably testing whether the difference would be, I guess, depending on which one is first. It's, it's a, it's a one-tailed test, right? Because we're wondering if the second one is the optimal. So depending on which one you say is your mean one or mean two, whether that's greater than zero or less than zero. All right. And all right, so um, we're wondering about the success rates of students. And we have some anecdotal evidence that students who return to college after an absence seem to be more successful. So we collect data, and we're looking at returning students who've had been away for two or more years, and um, um, more traditional students who are fresh from high school. And so we have this sample data about uh, 184 returning students were successful, 132. Um, oh, of 184, 132 were successful, and of 429, 256 were successful. OK, so here we're looking at the success rates, right? And so we're looking at a rate or a proportion. So uh, we're wondering here if those who return are more successful. So this is comparing two proportions. And our null hypothesis is that they'd be equal. And our alternative was that the proportion for returning students would be higher than the proportion for traditional students. All right. Next example, college administrator is trying to encourage faculty participation on academic committees. And she's prepared to implement it and wants to know if it actually changes faculty participation. So she has 10 faculty and records the number of committee meetings they are members of. That doesn't make sense. Maybe committee meetings they attend or committees they are members of. 
So then she has this new strategy, and then she records the attendance again for those same faculty. This seems kind of draconian, in my opinion. Who made up this example, anyway? Okay, so, anyway. Um, <laughs> so we've got a before and after here. So um, we're wondering if it changes faculty participation, but we have paired data, right? But we have a before and after, so we would be looking at the mean difference. We'd assume there's no difference, and we'd be wondering if the mean difference is negative, so the number of committees increased, or the number of meetings attended increased. So this would be looking at the mean difference. So there's an example for each one. Um, that is it for this last video. Lots of stuff to chew on. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post them in the comment section below, and I'll try to get to them.